Welcome back to the shipyard. The USS Raven was a collective OP prize ship. And as a scientific research vessel, I kind of am left questioning whether or not it ever should have been in attack wing. It's a nice enough model, but anything with one attack die, short of the pasture, which at least has some durability and, and some some interesting tricks to it. Uh, and, and of course, Romulan scout and science vessels, which are interesting uh, support vessels, just don't really make any impact. Um, I have seen the Airy class run. Um, I have not seen the Airy class run to any good effect. Now, I will, I will go to say I, I think there is potential here because you get this double tech slot. Um, and five durability with two defense dice is something you can work with. But this is a very overpriced ship. And if it cost more in the, oh, I don't know, 10 point range, which I think is reasonable, uh, you know, maybe 11, 12. Uh, we might have something. Uh, the named ability here, each time you attack or defend, if there's a, a scan token beside your ship, your ranged combat bonuses are doubled. Uh, I feel like that would be a much better ability on an offensive ship, because then you could scan, uh, get a bonus attack dice, two bonus attack dice at range one, and lowered their defenses by one. That actually would make a difference. Um, I, and I could run some other scan synergy, maybe do a double scan thing and, and do something like Spock, right? I could have something there. But as for this ship, I'll probably just evade every single time. Um, yeah, the base plate is 90, but every single base plate in existence for the USS Raven was misaligned. Uh, I forget which direction, but they're off-centered. So the only way you can run it properly is online, or just by using a different ship. And that's what I do. I just use a different ship. Uh, but yeah, the, the maneuver dial is, is pretty nice. One, two, turns white to come about it. It's a Romulan scout vessel. We, we just saw it. Um, yeah, the generic, hey, at least the generic preserves this double tech idea. That's kind of nice. Uh, our captain is the independent Magnus Hansen. Um, why not dual faction? I, I don't know. Um, now, you don't pay a faction penalty for putting Magnus Hansen on a Federation ship. And then during the modified defense dice step of the combat phase, you may spend a scan token to add one additional evade result to your defense roll. Well, I, I like that. It, it's actually nice synergy with the Airy class, or with the Raven specifically. Get the bonus defense die at range 3, then spend the scan to add the evade. You've rolled four defense dice and add an evade in there. Maybe you actually survive something. It's still unlikely. A research mission is a, a two-point talent. During the defense die step of the combat phase, you may disable this card to roll plus one defense die. Okay, that's nice the first time you do it, and after that it's an action for a defense die. That's worse than an action for an attack die. So we're going to move on. Multi-adapter shields. Now, this, this card that got a lot of play for a long time. And, and in all reality, can still get some play. Uh, it only functions while you have active shields. Each time you defend, you roll plus one defense die. When defending, you roll your full defense dice in spite of a scan token, and you get to roll your full defense against minefield tokens. Well, that's really nice. I mean, what's not to like there? Yeah, it's five points, but look at all you get. You get an extra defense die, right? That's worth one, two points. Uh, you get an extra defense die against scan, 
Well, that's it's something. It's not a whole lot, but it's something. And you get to roll defense dice against mines. That that's something. Um, you know, is it all worth five? No, but it's it's good. It's a reasonably good trade-off. No, you can only put this on a Fed ship. So Fed get all the nice tech toys, but uh, multi-adaptive is, is a really nice card and, and saw a ton of play. All right. Um, reinforce structural integrity. Um, the problem with this card is the very last sentence. This upgrade costs plus five points for any ship other than the USS Raven. Not just any class other than the airy class. No, any ship other than the named ship. So it has never really seen play. Uh, in fact, if anyone has ever run this card, please leave a message in the comments. Uh, I will like it. I don't know. Uh, each time your ship takes damage, place one of the damage cards that your ship receives beneath this card. All excess damage affects the ship as normal. You cannot place crits beneath this card. Once there are three damage cards beneath this card, discard it. So it's nice... But it's three attacks, and it's five points for that. So you have to survive being shot at at least twice for this card to actually matter. It's not like the Borga Blade of Whole Armor, which was just four damage you take. It's not even like a Blade of Whole Armor, which is three damage you take. No, this is one damage three times. That's the only way this card's worth it. And boy, that is um, iffy. That's a really iffy proposition. And it can only go on one ship. If it could go even on like whole three or less ships, I'd be on board with that. That would be a better restriction. All right, and the last card in this pack is uh, Aaron Hansen as a crew. During the planning phase, after all ships have chosen their maneuvers, you may discard this card to target one enemy ship at range one to three. Look at that ship's chosen maneuver. You may then change your maneuver. The target ship cannot change its maneuver after you look at it. So there's, there's actually some intrigue here, right? Um, this is... Pseudo protection against lure. Of course, they'll just lure a different ship that doesn't have Aaron Hansen on it. So you kind of don't gain anything. Uh, I guess you gain protection in the sense of that ship will be safe and they'll just choose somebody else. But they'll still mess with your fleet dynamic. Um, but this is reactionary this is hey i get to know where you're going to go and then i can adapt to where you're going from that uh, and and i like that that intrigue she's a little pricey but being able to look at a maneuver is a very powerful uh, effect i think more so i have a problem with her being a one-time effect uh, even if she was say two use you know, put two mission tokens on her. I think that would feel better uh, for me using a crew slot and really choosing to to pursue that strategy. Um, and even if she was two mission tokens with some time tokens, so that I couldn't do it back to back rounds, I would I would still think that that was worthwhile. But I don't know. Um, I like the effect. I just don't love the implementation of the effect. And like I said, that's it for the pack. Um, Aaron Hansen, intriguing. Multi-adapter shields, arguably the best card in this pack. Um, but its time is kind of faded in the game. Uh, not because minefields are any less prevalent. Just, Yeah. I, I guess adding shields isn't what it used to be, and um, there's just better ways to get more defense dice. People aren't scanning, 
and fed ships aren't everything that they used to be. Multi-adaptive is still, still great, but uh, yeah. Oh, I should note this, this only functions while you have active shields. So say uh, if somebody PSFs your ship, projected stasis field, and all your shields go down, multi-adaptive shields won't work, but you don't have to discard the card. So that is one benefit to this uh, over uh, shield adaptation. Is it shield adaptation? It's whatever the Dominion upgrade is. I think it's shield adaptation. Um, yeah. But yeah, overall, this pack is missable. And arguably, if you have to pay more than mm, 10, 15 bucks, it's really not worth it. It is a nice model. Um, well, it's an okay model. But you shouldn't go break the bank to get something like this. But yeah, that's the Raven, and uh, that's it for me. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, we'll see you around the shipyard. Take care, guys.